What is up guys? It's time for a brand new video. I know it's been a very long time, but today we're going to be looking at a man by the name of Sir Victor Goddard. Sir Victor Goddard is an air or was an air marshal, an air marshal, born on February 6, 1897. He was a senior commander in the Royal Air Force during the Second World War. He served as a Royal Navy from 1910 to 1918 and in the Royal Air Force 1918 to 1951. His years of service until the war 1910 to 1951. He held Chief of the New Zealand Air Staff 1941 to 43 and was number 30 in his squadron from 1930 to 31. He was in the First World War, Western Front, Battle of the Somme, Second World War, Battle of France, Southwest Pacific Theater. Guadalcanal Campaign, Solemn Islands Campaign, Southeast Asian Theater, Knight Commander of the Order of the Bath was his award, Commander of the Order of the British Empire, and he was mentioned in Despatches twice. He also got a Navy Distinguished Service Medal. Goddard is perhaps best known for his interest in paranormal phenomena. He claimed to have witnessed a clairvoyant incident in 1946 on which the feature film The Night My Number Came Up, 1955, was later based. So today, the reason why we're talking about him is because he has had a lot of interesting phenomenon. A lot of stuff happened to him. The first thing we're going to be talking about about Victor Goddard is the picture of him with Freddie Jackson, which you're looking at right now. So... We're going to get a little bit of information from that. Uh, Freddie Jackson is a man who was in the Army, in that same Army squadron, with uh, Victor Goddard, who passed away two days before the, this picture was taken. And this picture was taken for Freddie Jackson's funeral, which everybody would have claimed that Freddie Jackson would have ended up missing this photo because he was dead. But what's fascinating is that he did not miss it at all. He appears right in the background of Freddy of Victor Goddard, which isn't the first encounter he has with phenomenon or weird crap. So, um, let's see here. We're going to be looking, see if there's any other information that we can get on this. As you can see, the enlargement of the photo shows the ghostly image of a capeless or capless person's face. The anomaly is the source of the photo's popularity in the world. Of paranormal enthusiasts. If you search for Goddard's squadron on the web, you'll find many web pages listing the photo and their ghost photo. With the photo will still come a short story explaining how the photo was taken just days after Freddie Jackson accidentally walked into a moving propeller, but he wouldn't miss the squadron photo. What I don't quite understand is how he accidentally walked into a moving propeller. Maybe he was talking to somebody who wasn't looking like I do sometimes, and then I hit a pole. Something like that. So maybe I'm Freddie Jackson in this case. Anyway, this intriguing photo, taken in 1919, was first published in 1975 by Sir Victor Goddard, a retired RAF officer. The photo is a group portrait of Goddard's squadron, which had served in World War I at the HMS Didalus Training Facility. An extra ghostly face appears in the photo. The back of the airman, positioned on the top row, fourth from the left, can clearly be seen the face of another man. It's said to be the face of Freddie Jackson, an air mechanic who had been accidentally killed by an airplane propeller two days earlier. His funeral had taken place on the day this photograph was snapped. Members of the squadron easily recognized the face of Jackson's. It has been suggested that Jackson, unaware of his death, decided to show up for the group photo. There are scant details in such entries, but enough to start doing some basic investigation. One of the first things I wanted to understand was when and where the photo was taken. Most of the photo, or most of the stories being repeated in the echo chamber of paranormal themed internet pages included the phrase, aboard the HMS Daedalus. So let's talk about the HMS Daedalus, get more information on that so we can figure out this picture. At the time this photo was taken, the name HMS Daedalus was not attached to a ship, but to a trading facility. The facility has now been renamed RNA's Leon Solent. It is an airfield in the south of England which had which has changed hands between the Royal Air Force RAF and Royal Navy Service RNAS. 
a few times since being established in 1916. Many of the stories regarding this photo mention that it was taken at the end of World War I. If the date of the photography is accurate, then the base would have been in RAF control when the photo was taken. The base itself had been turned over to the RAF in April of 1918. And Armistice Day came on November 11th, 1918. Which obviously would make sense because, according to Victor Goddard, it says that he is a part of the Royal Air Force. So, it's so far, it's accurate, everything that we're talking about. Let's continue. There are a variety of service uniforms accounted for in the photo as well. It's a bit confusing as wartime events can be. At any rate, the people in the photo had been involved with seaplane training and activity during the war. These Bristol Valley short 150-225 pontoon planes. You can read more about their equipment and see some interesting photos related to the base in another webpage. So let's talk more about Sir Victor Goddard. Because that's of his first encounter. Well, it might be, but it's not as oldie. Uh, the photo is called Goddard Squadron. Some articles refer to the photo as first being published in 1975. A little research turned out that Sir Robert Victor Goddard, KCB, CBE, published a book that year titled Flight Towards Reality, in which the photograph is, to the best of my knowledge, first described in print. So, I want to get this book personally. So I can learn more about Victor Goddard. But let's talk about the other incident that happened with Victor Goddard. Now we got a little bit of information from... Uh, Freddie Jackson. We want to talk about his flight into the future. What do you see right here? The time slip mystery. So let's get way back. That's a picture of, uh, I guess, a painting of him. They might have actually got an actual picture of him because he did die in 87, but we'll never know. He died at the age of 89, so he lived quite a long time, saw a lot of stuff. But let's talk about what could have been a time slip into the future. And so far, it sounds like a time slip to the future. Every time I, like, watch a video about the time slips, it pops up, as well as information that I've searched up about it, and it's, the, what happened is really crazy, especially the fact that it later would actually come true, which makes it seem like it's a time slip, so who knows, but let's get into it. Uh, Victor Goddard's time slip. So, on the time traveling, uh, he was in the middle of flying in the sky, and all of a sudden, a storm hit. And it caused him to lose control of the of the plane. So, let, let's get further detail into it. One day that year, he was flying to Edinburgh from Andover, England. And while on his perfectly ordinary flight, he passed over a dilapidated airfield in Dram, Scotland. This place had long been abandoned to the point where foliage had overtaken most of the area and cattle had made themselves at home. That's what Goddard saw as he flew over a farm with a whole lot of nothing going on. So he continued on his way until he reached his destination at Edinburgh. A few days later, Goddard began his trip back to Andover. He took the same route which would lead him once again over Drim. But before he could get there, he ran into a, pe a peculiar storm. I call it peculiar, personally, because along with high winds and torrential rain, the storm clouds were yellow. It didn't take long for Goddard to become disoriented and lose control of his plane. He tried to regain control by climbing above the yellow clouds, but they seemed to have no end. His plane began to fall. Fortunately for him, that's when something unexpected happened. The clouds broke, and he could see the ground again. Off in the distance was the Drum airfield, the one that we were talking about that was completely covered in foliage. It has nothing. But now, as he approached the airfield, hoping to reorient himself, suddenly the storm vanished and the sky turned bright and sunny. It stopped raining, everything became clear. But something was different this time. The airfield at Drem was no longer abandoned. In fact, it looked good as new. He could see mechanics down below and four planes, each painted yellow, set on the runway. One was a model he'd never seen before. A monoplane unlike anything in the Royal Air Force in 1935. And what were the mechanics wearing? Blue overalls. This, along with the yellow planes, Goddard found strangest of all. RAF, Royal Air Force's, uh, mechanics in 1935 wore brown overalls, not blue, and there were no yellow planes to his knowledge. I'm going to talk to you about what the plane is, too, in a minute, or what it is. Goddard didn't have much to think about it, though, because he was flying too quickly to truly understand what he was seeing. By the time he'd passed over the airfield, the storm had suddenly returned, and the bright sunshine dissolved into hard rain, and those strange yellow clouds engulfed him once more. Once again, he found himself battling for control of his airplane. This time, he won, and was able to land safely at his home base. When he finally landed, he couldn't help but tell his friends what had happened. As you'd expect, he was met with skepticism. 
and afterward he mostly kept the story to himself. He didn't want anyone to think he was crazy, after all. He'd later retell it, among other things, in his 1975 book, Flight Towards Reality, which I kind of figured that's what the book was about. The final twist to this bizarre account, I bet you're wondering. In 1939, the vision that Sir Victor Goddard saw at the Drum Airfield actually came to pass. The RAF, World Air Force, obviously, began to paint their trading planes yellow and a new monoplane, the Magister, just like the one he witnessed in 1935. So it, there you go. I just covered what the plane was. The plane he did not recognize was a monoplane called the Magister, just like the one he witnessed in 1935, joined by the roster. By that year, even the mechanics overalls had been updated to blue. And, of course, the airfield at Dram had made a comeback. Had Sir Victor Goddard truly experienced a time slip, or could there be another explanation for what happened that day in 1935? Was he an advertent time traveler? Well, guys, that's about it on information on Sir Victor Goddard. We won't know for sure what happened with this man. One thing, one, two theories that have been tossed around is the fact that, obviously, he either went through time travel, he time slipped due to the clouds, or maybe, just maybe, he went to a parallel universe. Which, if it was parallel, that theory is kind of easy to debunk. Because if it was parallel, then it probably wouldn't have happened in the actual universe. Unless somehow he got crossed into that universe where that happened with the yellow clouds. The yellow clouds caught him into it again. And maybe it just kept him there. And he's in the parallel universe. Who knows? But thank you guys for watching. And let's... That's about it. I'm glad to be back on YouTube. And yeah, Sir Victor Goddard, a very interesting person. A lot of interesting stuff happened to him, which is why I went to do a video spe specifically on him because I was watching a lot of time traveling videos and I already s I've seen his picture. It's been around for quite a long time. So thank you guys and I will see you in another video later.